The following is a presentation of Sun Radio, the voice of Sun City Center and surrounding neighborhoods, on the air at 96.3 FM and on the web at wscqfm.com. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's installment of Someone You Should Know, a person living or working in the Sun Radio broadcast area who we think you might like to meet. Please join Peg Goodnow as she introduces you to Someone You Should Know. Good afternoon, this is Peg with another Someone You Should Know, and today I'm honored to have in the studio with me Mr. Bill Hodges of local fame. Bill, welcome. Thank you, Peg. I'm enjoying the fact that Sun Radio is here. It's wonderful. a wonderful opportunity for the community to be able to have something for all of us to get around. Thank you so much. Bill, tell us a little bit about your background. I know it's uh, it's you've had quite a varied career. Well, actually, going way back, I was born in Canada, so some of you will catch my outs and abouts. And like Ted Cruz, I am also an American citizen, <laughs> or at least that's what I claim and he does. Okay. But coming forward, I was in the United States Air Force, and then I was top salesman in three major corporations wow. and decided ultimately that I would join the oldest profession in the world and sell myself. Uh-oh. Care to explain that one for us? Well, I became a professional speaker and trainer, and for 36 years now, I've been on the stage in front of various organizations and companies and associations doing a variety of management skill training. Wonderful. Wow. What are some of the more more recent venues that you've appeared at? Really, it's very difficult to say because I've been all over the place, uh-huh. but an awful lot of what I do today is local. Uh-huh. I don't know if anybody else travels on airplanes, but I don't like to get on airplanes anymore. Going either. through an airport is not fun. It used to be fun, but airports aren't fun today. So instead of hopping on the plane and going to Washington to do jobs, I much prefer to stay here. And of course, you already know I have the television show Spotlight on Government in Tampa Television. And right. that's a fun thing for me, along with my columns in the in the Observer newspaper. Which are very interesting. Bill, how did you get your start in motivational speaking and um, <laughs> in your broadcast career? I, I actually owe my start to a very bad speaker. Okay. I won't mention his name, but I was a meeting planner. I was actually in the audiovisual business. And... At that point, we decided to go into the meeting planning business, and the company I owned, we planned meetings for Coppertone, Gillette, a variety of national corporations. Mead did their national sales meetings, Mm -hmm. and I did one for a real estate organization and hired this speaker that came highly promoted to me, and he was awful. Oh, my. I mean, he was terrible. I walked out of the room knowing my customer was going to just climb all over me. And you knew you could have done a better job. Well, not only that, the customer liked him. Oh, dear. (laughs) (laughs) And I thought, whoa, wait a minute. If I'm making two fifty a week at the time and I paid him $500 to walk out and do an hour, I'm in the wrong place. I guess. So at that point, I used my meeting planner connections and the rest, as they say, is history. Wow. Wow, oh, that's that's something else. How'd you get started with the um, TV show? Well, actually, that started back in 1984, believe it or not. I had a friend who ran for public office who was doing a local show on cable television, mm-hmm. and she could no longer, once she won the office, keep the show. So she said, would you like to do it? And I said, well, yeah, I, I think that'd be kind of fun to do. Just I'll try it a little bit. And it kept going and going and going. And all of a sudden, I'm doing regular shows. And then when we moved down here, I thought, well, okay, I'm done. I I won't do that anymore. And the local uh, TBCN called me and said, look, I managed the shows up in Great Lakes region. I've seen your shows. Would you consider doing a show for us? I thought, well, on occasion, let's do a little bit. And I started there 13 years ago doing shows. I've interviewed almost every political person in this entire area, including the office holders uh, that are not elected but are running various departments in Hillsborough County. Hmm. 
Wow, that's that's pretty amazing. <laughs> it is. You know, if you keep your doors open, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. too many times people have all kinds of opportunities beating the door down. Yeah. And they've yeah. got the door locked. This is true. And they're afraid to open it up. Right, Peg? We were talking to uh, Bill Cruz um, last week, and I don't know if you heard his interview running, um, um, which ran this week or is still running, but he was saying that when he wanted to break into acting, that was kind of a passion of his from childhood, and he thought, oh, how do I do this? What doors do I knock on and on? He said, he just through prayer, the Lord spoke to him and said, no, leave it to me. I'll open those doors for you. And he said things just started falling into his lap. <laughs> you know, again, remaining open. That's true. Remaining That's true. open is is one of the biggest things that you can do. And, and I'm with him. If you we know, take the time to listen. Lay it down and watch. Mm-hmm. That's true. Have Just a like faith. meeting somebody like you, as interesting as you are. I'd love to put you on the other side of this and interview one of these days. Oh, all right. <laughs> Not much to tell here. <laughs> oh, I think there's quite a bit to tell. You've got a lot of talent and you share it very freely with others. I think that's an important thing, being willing to give. Well, I have an interest in people and that's what, um, I think that's what makes this, this kind of a job, if you will, fun. Because I've always been interested in people from the time I was a little taught. My mother used to say, Peggy, don't talk to strangers. And I, <laughs> you know, what's a stranger? <laughs> what, what is a stranger exactly. idea? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, how did you break into the political end of it? I mean, you, you were doing motivational speaking on, um, obviously sales and, and, uh, product promotions and well, so Well, along forth. the way, Because I love to speak and I love to be involved. And I think this nation, the power of this nation is people getting involved. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care whether you agree with me, but get involved. True. Don't just sit there and listen to the news networks and repeat what they say. Or or just complain about what's happening without trying to make a change. So back in Ohio... I happened, the the person that ran for office and gave me the TV show, Mm -hmm. she said, how would you like to do a regular show with one of our state senators? And I said, yeah, that'd be fun. So we did. About once every six weeks, he would come on the show and we'd talk. Well, he decided he wanted to run for Congress. And he said, would you consider helping run my campaign? And I said, well, I I guess I could. Hmm. What time I have. And so we got him elected, and then I had a couple of judges come to me and say, you know, Bill, you're good for about 5,000 votes in the county, so, <laughs> so would you help me do it? You know, it's one of those things where you back just, into it, Yeah, mushroom. Uh, you weren't you. going full force to it, but all of a sudden, mm-hmm. you're getting phone calls saying, would you help me? And yeah. I'm a sucker for that. I worked for a small radio station in um, Akron, Ohio one time, and your wife and I were talking last week, and and I said, uh, you know, I, I kind of left that station very abruptly because they said it was a talk talk radio. And they said I wasn't controversial enough. <laughs> <laughs> we share that also. Yes, yes. I, I did the same thing. <laughs> and they just called me in one day and said, look, you know, if you're not willing to drop bombs on people, call them stupid. And slam down the phone. You can't work here anymore. And I I really didn't care. It was something I was doing on the weekends anyway. Right, right. Well, my husband would disagree with their evaluation of me. but (laughs) (laughs) You mentioned my wife. And and I really, Phyllis Hodges is my wife. And she is, whatever I did right somewhere along the line, she is the blessing Uh I have from that. (laughs) Uh, Everybody loves Phyllis. They tolerate me. (laughs) Well, you know, that's that that's a give and take kind of thing. <laughs> well, we only have a minute left, Bill. Tell us some of the um some of the highlights of your career that that you would most like to or that you're the most proud of, I should say. I think it's because of the career and because of the job I had, if you want to call it a job, going out and speaking at major conferences and conventions, it's mm-hmm. meeting people. Right. It's like meeting Uncle Milty. Mm-hmm. And then getting to know him a little bit and him inviting me to to have lunch with him. And while we're at lunch, he walks in and, oh, great, he did come. <laughs> and, and But then you know what? He walked over the table and he said, I'm, 
I hope you don't mind. I've invited someone else to sit down with us. And I thought, oh, I'm going to lose my chance to be with Milton Berle for a whole hour by myself. And just then, and I almost said it, Bob Hope walked (gasps) through the door. Oh, you're kidding. It was there in the, uh, in Hollywood. And I almost said, there's Bob Hope. And and Milton Berle said, it's Bob Hope. I hope you don't mind. Oh, gosh, mind. (laughs) And and the two of them, two of them put on a vaudeville show for me for an hour. Have you ever hurt so bad in your 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 chest and your ribs? (laughs) You were going to fall off the chair. They pulled out every vaudeville machine they could trying to one up the other one. And I I think that that was, was of all the highlights, that Mm -hmm. was one of the top things. Wow. Well, we'll have to have you back again. I'm sorry the the program is only 10 minutes long, but we'll definitely have you back again, Bill. And uh, this has been a joy and a pleasure to learn a little bit about you, get to know you a little bit, and uh, I want to know more. So. Well, I have to tell you, Peg, the pleasure is mine. You and the people at Sun Radio that are putting so much of your blood, sweat, and tears mm-hmm. in making this a success really deserve a lot of credit. And I hope that things just continue to blossom for you. Thank you. That's why they pay us the big bucks, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you again for coming in. And this is Peg saying we'll be back next time with another Someone You Should Know. Plan to be with us again next week at the same time when Peg Goodenow will once again introduce you to Someone You Should Know. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for more great programming right here on Sun Radio. Sun Radio.